It's a real minefield out there, with the market flooded with bikes that can go on the road and off the road. Should you go dual sport or should you go adventure? So today, we thought we'd set ourselves a few real life challenges to help you decide. This isn't a video about which makes the best adventure bike or the best dual sport. Simply, which is the easiest to live with and where should you put your money? I like sheep. And the weapon I've chose, or the bike that I've got, is the 2020 CRF 250L. Cheap, so affordable, lightweight, which is what you want, easy to uh, handle. And there's not really anything else worth considering, to be honest, is there? I mean, what else would you think? Behold the new machine in my garage. What have you done? This is the Yamaha T7 World Raid. And look at it. Isn't it a thing of utter, utter beauty? It's is got power beyond measure. Not quite strictly true, but it's got a lot of power. It looks incredible and it can go for years. It can go on and on. I think it's got like a 300 mile tank range. Not that I've tested that yet. So this has got to be considered an option if you're in that market for a on off-road bike, right? How much does that weigh? Weight is a thing. It's uh, around two, 220 kilos. Two and a half tons. Well, but what I will say is that could be a benefit in certain circumstances. On the road, for example, it's incredibly steady. So yeah, it's got pros and cons is what I'm saying. All I'm saying is give it a chance. <laughs> It's a thing of beauty. It rides beautifully on the road. It's, it's a T7, so we know it can go off-road. Well. There's only one way to solve this, isn't there? And so we set ourselves a number of tasks. Tasks that you might come across in real life. Now, this isn't to show which is easier necessarily, but just to highlight the things that you would have to consider if you were thinking to buy an adventure bike or a dual sport. And the first challenge was an obvious one not weighted in my favour. Oh no, what's happened here? So here we are, an archetypal situation for every motorcycle rider. You've come onto some slippery grass, your bike has fallen over. So we have devised this challenge where, to show the weight and the balance of the bike, we're going to pick the bike up and then do a 360 around the bike. Timed. That's how we're going to do it. So, Jamie, prepare your timer. I'm rubbish at picking bikes up as well. Right, here we go. I'm gonna turn my back on you. Right, so you ready? Three, two, one. Why on? Go. <laughs> 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> <Back out. laughs> oh, that's a heavy beast. Balance. Balance. This is where the weight, I think, wins out because it's pretty sure-footed if it's upright. Done. See, that's a, okay, I've probably gifted you five seconds, 10 seconds there. <laughs> right, well. Just, well, just do it again if you want. Bring yours in. <laughs> right, Are you ready for this? Then take two because again. the camera yeah. wasn't recording. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm more happy to do this twice with a bike that weighs 150 kilos than I would be with a bike that weighs 220. So Three, we've done this loads of times. Two, one, go. Uh, luckily. Yeah, 19 seconds. Actually, a second quicker to the effort that we didn't record. Yeah, and I almost dropped it on the first time around, so it's a good job we did it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just, it, it's 70 kilos lighter. It's, it's, it's going to lift up easier. And I've got the added bonus of I've lifted this bike up quite a lot, so I know what it's like. I genuinely think, had I got the bike up first time, I'd have been close to 25 or 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. I wasted yeah. time because bad technique, really, but that is a thing to consider. And then you just stood there. Yeah. Tired. 
So, <laughs> so yeah. it's not a, it's not a directly fair competition because of that, but or well, a let's roll yours back in again then, and we'll do it again to give you a fair crack. Then we both had two attempts. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm all about the fairness. You have three or four attempts if you want. No, no, I don't think I want that. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it's just a heavier bike. I'm going this way. I'm going this way. Jesus Christ. Yes! 22.7? Yes! <laughs> so you lost by slightly less? Yeah. Oh, but, I was always going to lose. Yeah. It's a far heavier bike. And it is an effort to stand it up. It really is. But I'm happy with that. A lot more representative. It really is, yeah. With that narrow victory for the dual sport, we decided to get our wheels turning. Hit the trails and roads, the two mainstays for any bike that's going to be considered for an adventure. We've just done quite a bit of road riding and a bit of off-road riding on the dual sport and the adventure bike. So I think it's only fair that we speak about that. Yeah, they're obviously the two biggest and most major elements that you're going to want to consider if you're going to go adventuring in any sense, really. It has yeah. to be. And the T7, honestly, it just excels there. The engine on the road, and off-road, but on the road is perfect. It's got a lot of power, hasn't it? it, it it's, it's at the sweet spot, I think. It's perfect, but it's got punch, and it's smooth, and it's, oh, I just love it. I love it on the road. But we've got a, you know, the, the dual sport as well on the road yeah. has got some really good road manners. You know, when we're talking marginal differences here, uh, one of the marginal differences, the adventure bike to the dual sport, is it's smoother, because it's a twin, um, and it's just a bit bigger. It, it sort of carries itself with more momentum, with more grace almost. Yeah, it's naturally that little bit bigger. The wind protection is greater. Um, the seat is wider. All of these things, you know? Yeah. When, when you pay off with weight, you're gaining in comfort. But like you said, the dual sport on the road is, I think what the, the phrase should be is it's perfectly adequate. Off-road, conversely, that extra power, it's nice. I enjoy it off-road, but it can be a little bit of a downside in the respect you have to think about where you're going to use that power. You can be a bit of an idiot with a smaller bike, small capacity, and kind of just give it the beans and you're not going to get an awful lot out of it, but it's not going to rip your arms off, is it? And so off-road, I think we both agree that you know, it's, just, it's easier to ride the smaller bike off-road. For ease of use, it's lighter, you can flick it about easier, you can pick it up easier, uh, and it tends to skip over the obstacles yeah. a little bit easier. Anyway. There's countless results on YouTube of how these bikes deal on the road and off the road. We're focusing on real life tests. Next one, manoeuvrability. So that's gonna be the next challenge, um, handing these uh, and what's it like trying to turn each one of these bikes around on the lane. All right, best we set out some challenges. Get the cones. Love a cone. A impassable challenge in the lane. I don't know what that could be like a fallen tree or something. Anyway, can't get past this, but you've ridden up to it. I'm gonna use my brains about this because I'm not gonna actually manhandle it by pushing it. I'm gonna sit on it and waddle it because I've got big legs. And I think that's the best way to do it on a bigger bike. You know what? I wish I knew how to do spin turns because then I would just do that, but I don't. This is a good story. Good chat. Uh, okay. I think I made that look relatively easy. One of the things I have noticed is if I'm trying to pull it backwards uphill, that's bad for me. And there's a slight camber on this, left down to right. And I noticed that on marks. So I'm going to go the opposite way round. And I'm just going to see what happens. Here we go down the lane. 
Oh no, I've come to a stop in the road. Well, I think that was easier. Next challenge. How easy are these bikes to manoeuvre when you get home? So I suppose the big thing is going to be living with the bikes, isn't it? And so we've devised a little bit of a challenge. The idea being, what's it like to put your bike away at the end of the day? And then what's it like to get it out at the beginning of the next day? So let me walk you through what we've got to do. So we can come up to this bit and this simulates the garden path, okay? Next to uh, your better half's prized gardening. And you can ride all the way along here if you were so dare. But when you get to the end of here, the engine must be turned off because you don't want to wake the baby. You know, you've had a long old day, keep the baby asleep. But then you get into your garden, you've got your koi carp at the pond and you need to navigate your way around that choice of options, left or right, entirely up to the, uh, the rider. But either way, you have to come all the way around and then park your bike in the shed and then you've got to get out in the morning and that's it he's gone the tight way I have. Oh yeah. Nice little technique. He's caught on the pathway. Yeah, one of the benefits of a dual sport, you can just spin it around like that, I suppose. And into the shed. Simple as that. Actually not too bad. Next morning then. All Get right. yourself to work, young man. Oh, I love Monday mornings. Don't disturb those koi carp. And he goes. That does look easily manoeuvrable, doesn't it? It really is. What I will say is the slow speed manoeuvrability of this is very easy. Save the baby. Yeah, caution of la baby. Because once you're moving with all this weight, actually, it doesn't really matter for much. Momentum is king. Now I'm going to try something here. Oh, backing up. Yes. Again, I feel like I've outdone myself here. I'm in the shed. Okay, yeah, you're in. Next morning. You've made your life easier for yourself here, haven't you? Yeah. I think that's to deal with when you've got a bigger bike. You've just got to think about things that little bit in advance, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be tight. Right. Baby's already up. Been screaming since four o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of cheating going on there. No. The path is representative. You know what the deal is with a bigger bike? You literally just need to think a little bit of a head. That's the deal. They've got the similar steering lock-ish, I suppose. Yeah. But we said earlier on, I think this has got a longer wheelbase, hasn't it? We believe. Yeah, I, I think it's just a physically bigger, longer, wider bike, you know, in, in nearly every respect, so. But if, you, if you've got to get your bike in somewhere tight on a routine basis, 
you've definitely got to think about that. There we go then, we've put both bikes through a number of challenges. Um, and I think it's fair to say that both on and off road, both bikes are capable in their own rights. And as you would expect, you know, they're both designed for both environments, but, and they're both a, a really good tool for the job. You just need to figure out what job it is you're most likely to be using, uh, to be challenging. Yeah, some are stronger in areas, some are weaker in areas, but I think on balance, both are equal, you know, they're, they're both very good tools for the job. For me, it comes down to the decider point is manoeuvrability, because I have been moving this around all day, beating it around, and I'm done. I'm beat, you know? And, and I totally agree with you. Obviously, you know that my sort of heart lies in this camp more so anyway, but as a shorter person, a smaller, more manoeuvrable, lighter bike is definitely a thing that gives me confidence, makes me feel happier moving it around and, and trying to control it a little bit better. Yeah, I, I reckon for me, and I love riding my CRF, if I was going somewhere where I didn't really know, I couldn't predict if I'd have to manoeuvre it in some of the um, areas that we've tried, I'd, I'd pick the CRF because I know I could manhandle it, I know I could beast it. If I didn't really have to worry about that so much, I could relatively predict where I was going. I think maybe something like this, but that's, that lays at the very heart of the adventure you're choosing to have, right? Yeah, I totally agree, totally agree. So I hope, hope that's been useful for you. We've not gone into tech specs. There's loads of videos out there that will cover off that if that's what you want, but real world, living with it every day, hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight if you're in that world of figuring out what bike you're gonna go for. So if you've enjoyed watching this video, please comment, like, subscribe. It really does help us out. But until the next time, stay safe. Take care. We'll see you on the trails. Goodbye. <laughs>